Uh, yeah, this is a great time to mow your lawn. A photo of a very determined man in Canada mowing his lawn while a large tornado approached behind him has attracted plenty of attention on social media. The tornado was sighted near a town called Three Hills in Alberta. Prior to the incident, local resident Dionys Vessels reportedly told his wife Cecilia that he wanted to mow the lawn ahead of a busy weekend. Cecilia was later woken from a nap by her nine-year-old daughter, who was upset that there appeared to be something like a tornado in the sky, and her dad wouldn't come inside. Since the vessels have never seen a tornado in their lives, Cecilia took a picture of the incident to show her parents back home in South Africa. But people were less fascinated by the tornado than they were by the image of her husband pushing a lawnmower while the twister loomed behind him. But Diana seemed unconcerned, saying he was keeping an eye on it. Luckily, no injuries were reported from the tornado. Diana said the tornado was actually far away, and he succeeded in finishing cutting the grass, commenting that the lawn now looks nice. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Uh, be careful of tornadoes. Not everyone is as lucky as Dionys and his family. Texas couple chatting on FaceTime when tornado kills wife. Seven motorists were killed near Garland, Texas Saturday night after a tornado packing winds of up to 200 miles an hour ripped up roads and overturned vehicles. Petra Ruiz Porres, a 27-year-old mother of four, was among the victims. Her husband, Ruben, sadly, witnessed the moment of his wife's death. Ruben Porres had surprised his wife on Christmas Day with a gift, a solo trip to a hair salon for some R&R, &R, something any mom will tell you is quite a treat. Driving back to their home in Mesquite after the appointment, Petra turned on FaceTime and started chatting with Ruben about dinner and family stuff, when suddenly, Ruben heard Petra begin screaming, he watched as the screen got fuzzy and then went black. Using a locator app, Ruben identified the spot where his wife's phone signal had come from and a friend drove him to the site. Blocked roads forced Ruben to run the last mile, past trees torn to shreds and cars flipped over like toys. He says he was just hoping she was still alive. When he arrived at his wife's crushed overturned vehicle, his hopes were shattered. Petra Ruiz Porres, a mother, wife, and Ruben's best friend, was dead. He leaned in and held her hand one last time. Hours later, Porres sat down with his four kids, ages two through nine, and told them their mother wasn't coming home. Ruben says he believes Petra's passing was swift and knows she's now watching over them from above. A GoFundMe page for the family has since raised over $36,000. Tornado wrecks havoc in Mexico border city. The first tornado to hit a Mexican border city in more than a century struck on Monday morning, killing at least 13 people. A tornado struck the Mexican border city of Ciudad Acuna at 6.40 on Monday morning. A government official told the BBC that an area of about seven blocks was affected by the tornado, causing devastating damage that left 230 people hospitalized, 10 adults and three children dead, as well as around 750 properties in ruins. In the wake of the tornado, eight shelters have been set up in the city. Mexican President Enrique Pena Nieto was set to visit the city on Monday evening in order to survey the damage. Multiple tornadoes strike Oklahoma, leaving one person dead. At least three tornadoes hit Oklahoma and Arkansas during a supercell thunderstorm on Wednesday. Multiple tornadoes were seen moving through the Tulsa suburb of Sand Springs, Moore, near Oklahoma City and Westport in Oklahoma, as well as in Arkansas on Wednesday, leaving one person killed and several injured. Tornadoes often develop from supercell thunderstorms. Supercells are formed when wind shear sets air spinning and the updraft tips the spinning air upright. The updraft then starts rotating, forming mesocyclones within the supercell. The rising air then expands and spreads, forming an anvil cloud. Convergence of warm air in the updraft and cooler air from the downdraft causes a rotating wall cloud to form as the mesocyclone lowers below the cloud base. An area of low pressure at the surface then pulls the mesocyclone down, forming a funnel cloud. A tornado is born when the funnel touches the ground. Multiple buildings were damaged and numerous cars and trucks were overturned by the tornadoes. Rain, lightning and winds were hampering rescue efforts. Say no to safe spaces on YouTube. Support Tomo News at patreon.com slash Tomo News. Don't believe in God? Watch this video and you just might change your mind. Watch the bottom left of the screen. 
See that person looking for shelter? Then boom, a tornado slams into the building. That woman is either exceptionally lucky, or as she believes, was spared by the hand of God. OMG indeed. And that was just one of the over 50 strong tornadoes that hit the Gulf and East oh Coast of the US God. between February 23rd and 24th. Wikipedia reports the storms were the second largest tornado outbreak ever recorded in the States, which sadly claimed the lives of at least seven people. The survivor you saw is Kira Johnson, who works as a FedEx driver in Louisiana. Shortly after 3 p.m. on February 23, 2016, Johnson tried to escape an approaching tornado. Leaving her vehicle, she desperately ran towards Sagona's True Value Hardware Store in Pankerville. The store was locked up, and after tugging on the doors for a second or two, Johnson disappears off screen. Moments later, BAM! The entire building is ripped to shreds. We can't see it, but Johnson survived by wedging herself between a wall and a vending machine, and it was just enough cover to spare her a grisly fate. Other cameras at the store also recorded the moment the twister struck, and as you can see, it doesn't look very survivable. The store was pretty much obliterated. 45 homes were wiped off the map, while 22 other buildings were seriously damaged. Hmm. Kira Johnson told the media, I braced myself between the Coke machine and the wall, and I just know it saved me. Jesus saved me, she said, recounting how she prayed that God would spare her life as the winds howled around her. Pretty much every Facebooker commenting on the story attributes Kira's survival to divine intervention. And with this level of destruction, it's hard not to wonder if someone was indeed looking out for Miss Johnson. Store owner David Sagona presented a Save by the Hands of God t-shirt to Johnson, and also quite wisely, began using the tornado tail as a marketing tool. But divine intervention or not, Kira Johnson is spot on when she says she's counting her blessings. And man, she's got a lot to be thankful for.